Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today I'm doing another Manga Mondays recommendation video. If you're noticing some background noise, I do have the window open. It's warm in here. I kept the window open so you're aware that's what's going on. Um, you'll hear a bit of traffic and some kids, I think, because that's what I'm hearing. Um, at any rate, today we're going to do a recommendation video for manga and the topic for today is Jose Manga. So those are manga that are or were originally targeted or marketed to an adult female audience, um, to a f woman audience, and uh, unlike you know shoujo manga, which has a slightly younger demographic of sort of teens down to kids, and uh, shonen manga, which is sort of the equivalent to shoujo manga but for boys, and seinen, which is the equivalent of jose but for adult men. Um, so today we're going to talk about Jose, and I decided to group this as a demographic um, rather than a subject because there isn't quite as much publishing for Jose manga in English. There's still quite a bit, and you'll be surprised to see uh, once you start exploring how much there actually is, but it's not as obvious. And I think even when you're looking at it, you're not necessarily thinking, oh hey, that's Jose manga. Um, Jose manga covers a lot of different themes um, from every possible theme that you can think of in any other demographic, um, but because it is targeted to an adult female audience it does have a slightly different flavor to it. There are there are other uh, genres or subgenres to Jose manga. There's um, another category called ladies manga which is sort of more um, hentai or ecchi manga geared towards adult ladies. There's also yaoi manga which I personally categorize as jose manga because at least originally or for a long time it has been primarily targeted to an adult female audience and so it does belong in this particular marketing demographic. I'm not going to talk about yaoi or ladies manga in this particular video. I'm just going to talk about sort of a generic jose manga in general and sort of what we have available to us. There's more here than I'm going to talk about, um, but I'm going to try and give you a little bit of variety of some things that you might be able to pick up. Hopefully some of them are in print. That sort of would be ideal. So the first title I want to talk about is a Drunken Dream and Other Stories by Moto Hagio. Really anything by Moto Hagio would work for this category. While well, she does have some shoujo manga as well, there are some Jose titles that she's written. Um, and I'm only fairly new to Moto Hagio. I think I've only read two of her titles so far. The three of them have been published by Fantagraphics. You can find some short stories in some of the Viz, early Viz compilations. And I believe you can also read one of her stories in um, one of the Mechademia issues. So if you wanted to go online, if you're at a university or something, and actually look up Moto Hagio, you should be able to find her short story. Um, at any rate, I think that she is well worth reading, and I particularly liked this uh, set of short stories. I'm not normally a fan of short stories, uh, short story collections in general, just because you don't have a chance to really get into the story and get into the, the feelings, um, but this one really worked for me. And really the only thing that I found at fault with this is because it is a collection, it's so um, I would have really preferred to have this published in single issues and to read them um, just sort of at a leisurely pace and not maybe next to each other. Um, it is a good curation though and the comics are um, for the most part uh, quite similar. They kind of deal with themes of past regrets or finding your place in your family so they do kind of cover those themes. There's often some sort of a tragic element to the story before the character has some realization about themselves or about their family. A lot of the stories follow these similar themes although they are really different in um, genres. It does sort of have slice of life as well as goes into science fiction so you do get quite a lot of uh, different things in this particular compilation. And then on top of that, uh, the title story is fully in color and it is absolutely beautiful. It is such a gorgeous publication. It's kind of printed in shades of gray and red and the reds are just, they're stunning. They're so beautiful. Um, so uh, for that alone, I would say try and pick this up. It is fairly recently out of print, but since it's a single volume, you should be able to uh, come across it without too much difficulty, I would say. 
I found the stories in this uh, quite moving, particularly the Iguana Girl story. I thought that one was absolutely wonderful, and it was so wonderful I ended up actually buying a Japanese version of that story in particular after reading this because I just, I needed to own it. Um, so I think that this is just well worth reading, and if you were not going to pick up any other Jose titles, especially from this list, I would say at least give Motohagio a go if you haven't already. The next title that I would recommend you check out is Oku the Inner Chambers by Fumi Yoshinaga. Fumi Yoshinaga has quite a lot of titles that have been published in English. Um, most of them I think you can find in the Yaoi section. Uh, we have I think pretty much everything that she's got published, but there is quite a lot of Yaoi. Um, there are also some other titles, uh, other Jose titles that you can choose from, and this is one of the better ones in my opinion. I haven't read this one to completion yet. I believe it is still ongoing. We haven't picked up a recent volume, or we haven't picked up a new volume recently, so I'm not entirely sure uh, kind of what the status is of this particular title, um, and it is into the teens now, possibly the 20s. I think it's just the teens. I think it's still just the teens. Um, so this is basically an alternate retelling of Japan's history where a plague has occurred and the majority of the male population has been wiped out and so now women are in power but because the male population is so small they are kind of uh, protected and um, they are kind of a protected species in a way. Uh, the most beautiful of the males are sent to live in the Shogun's inner chambers as his, her concu concubines, and um, you know basically to, to serve the Shogun and be treated really well. And so this is basically the story of the men in that particular inner chamber as well as the Shogun and I think in one particular male in particular but I haven't read completely through the series so I don't know if the story focus changes. Um, at any rate Fumi Yoshinaga is really uh, worthwhile picking up regardless of any of her titles that you pick up and any of her genres that you kind of dabble in. She always writes uh, really uh, strong relational uh, dramas so the stories are quite um, usually I would say actually on the slow side um, and they develop um, <laughs> stupid bird and they develop in in a really um, believable way I guess I'm never really emotionally attached to the characters in her titles but I really do like the way that she tells stories and in particular I think she's a beautiful illustrator I think her illustrations are absolutely stunning so um, I would recommend this, as well as so would uh, the Eisner Award Committee, because it was nominated in 2008, so you definitely uh, should check this one out if you have a chance. It should still be mostly in print. So the next title that I want to recommend to you is a little bit different. It's hard to find because it is out of print, but it's something that I really enjoy reading, and that is Magical Miracle by Yuzu Mizutani. It doesn't really look like Jose Manga, and even when you're reading it, you're not like, oh yeah, this is totally Jose Manga. It has a fairly young main lead character, and the story is quite a uh, cutesy fantasy. Um, but there is something about it, there's just something about it that is just so enjoyable. This is basically about a girl, Merlot, who is going to go to the academy to start learning magic. On her way there, she is kidnapped by uh, some of the royal, uh, some of the main players in the castle, and is blackmailed into becoming their missing master wizard. So their master wizard has gone missing, and this is the boy or, or man who has um, so much power and uh, is a really pivotal person in the government and really keeps their country from kind of going to war and keeps them protected. And so she is uh, sort of like a Prince and the Pauper type tale is filling in his shoes while they look for him because of course if they say hey the Master Wizard is missing then the entire country is going to go into a state of panic um, as well as sort of uh, other countries may come in and invade. Um, this is basically a very short fantasy series. It could have gone a lot longer. It does cover a lot of the tropes that you would expect in uh, shoujo fantasy. Um, it is very very light on romance and I would say almost non-existent unless you're looking for it so um, you know if if you don't want to read a romance series but you do want to read kind of a shoujo-esque type story this is a really good title to check out um, it's 
I wouldn't say it's the strongest story. It's kind of predictable, uh, but the characters are really likable, and it's just a lot of fun to read, and it is a really different pick for a Jose title. Um, and speaking of different picks, there's also Tomie by Junji Ito. Now Junji Ito is the master of horror, and so this is not a title that you'd expect to see on a Jose list. Um, but uh, Junji Ito actually wrote a lot of shoujo and Jose horror, and um, there's actually a bit of horror that is written for uh, shoujo audience in particular that I can think of, um, but we just don't have a lot of it actually published in English, and it's almost non-existent in English, which is such a shame because I enjoy this so much. Um, this is not Junji Ito's best work, but it is really interesting to read knowing that it is a Jose work. This is basically the story of a young woman named Tomie, and she is sort of like a succubus, I would say. Um, she is so incredibly beautiful that she can seduce any man. When they have unfortunately come into contact with Tomie, she can drive any man mad and, and drive them to murder, including murdering her. So um, there are many times where she actually does get murdered by the man in question. Um, and the thing is that, of course, she cannot die, and so she constantly is coming back and coming back and coming back. Um, and so this is just sort of that uh, horror. There are some characters who do kind of follow uh, into the story a bit. Most of this is episodic. Um, but it is just a, a really uh, enjoyable title. I think it's one of uh, Junji Ito's first, if not his first work, so that also um, is interesting, and it is uh, really a beautifully drawn horror manga, so um, I just, I am such a fan of Junji Ito, and I'm so glad to see so many of his works coming into English, and this one in particular is interesting, particularly because it is a Jose title, so, so if you are into horror manga, I think you might want to give this one a shot. So the next title that I wanted to include is Gestalt by Yun Koga, um, mostly because I think that you should check out uh, Yun Koga, uh, they're the creator of Loveless as well as Earthian, and quite a few other titles that have been translated into English, um, but also because um, this, um, as an anime, there was a very short OVA, I think it was sort of a pilot to the series because it feels like um, two episodes or three episodes and then it just ends. Um, but it was something that I really enjoyed when I was watching anime, and I've seen it many times. Um, so I was thrilled when the manga actually was released in English because um, it's so great to be able to read the thing that I loved when I was into anime. Um, this is basically the story about... Well, this is basically... It kind of is a high fantasy. It feels... It has a video game feel or kind of an RPG type feel. Um, basically battle fantasy, um, which is different for Jose manga, I would say, or at least definitely from the options that we have in English. Um, so this is basically the story about um, one priest of some religious order, and he is tired of the order, the rules and regulations of the order, and so he is on a journey to go to the unnamed place called G, um, and or Gestalt, and he ends up uh, very early on uh, taking on a slave who happens to be this woman here, and uh, she can't communicate, um, and within the first chapter, so I think that this is not too much of a spoiler, you discover that she is actually part of uh, some something, I guess. She's part of something where she is in a battle um, against a whole bunch of other uh, people, either gods or sorcerers, um, and they have to all defeat each other, and the person who is sort of left will become the ruler of this thing. Um, I, yeah, I think that's as much as I want to say about it. So there are quite a lot of foes that you have to face um, at different locations, and then there's these ap epic battles while you are defeating them, as well as discovering who this woman is, and uh, kind of unraveling the secrets of Gestalt. I think that this is a really interesting title to read, I think particularly because it just doesn't feel um, like you would expect a regular Jose manga. I think most people, when they're perceiving Jose, at least for myself, it is going to be um, a big romance 
series, usually kind of a slice of life office lady uh, falling in love with some some guy. Um, this is not that at all, and uh, it's definitely very different. It, it has more of a battle fantasy feel to it. Yunkoga is also really interesting just because they play a lot with uh, gender norms and uh, it's it's always kind of pulled off in an unusual way that I haven't thought of before so um, I really think that this one's kind of interesting as well as super nostalgic for me and kind of a fun read so you should check it out if you're interested. So speaking of what we perceive as Jose Manga, here's sort of the standard fare. This is Everyone's Getting Married by Izumi Miyazono. This one is still ongoing, I believe. I don't... I haven't read the conclusion, so I'm pretty sure it's still ongoing. This is basically the most typical scenario, um, but just sort of in a slightly new way, and I, I really enjoyed it for that. Um, basically, this is a story about a man who doesn't want to get married and a woman who really does want to get married, and... Um, them falling in love with each other and having to deal with this this thing that's sort of hanging over them in their relationship. Um, it also really talks about um, how uh, wanting to get married is perceived and how despite the fact that she is really accomplished and she is um, really good at her job and she works really hard at her job, this is still her dream. She doesn't want to be bullied into thinking that um, becoming a housewife and you know having kids and taking care of her husband is any less of a job than than working at an office and so I really appreciate it for that I really like some of the relationship dynamic between these two characters um, later on in the series there is a bit of a love triangle and I absolutely hate that scenario so much and it's lasting a little bit too long so at the moment I'm a little bit frustrated with the series but until that moment it's a really fun series and I'm pretty sure it'll resolve the way that I expect it to, so um, I think it's a pretty good one for being exactly what you expect from Jose Manga. Next title I'm going to recommend is Paradise Kiss by Ayazawa. This is the same author as Nana um, and it has been published in a couple of different forms including an omnibus I think, so you should be able to find it. I think it's out of print in all the forms but uh, it shouldn't be too hard to track down, I don't think. Um, this is an enjoyable title to me, and um, there may be some problems with uh, some of the character relationships or the some of the messages, I guess, of the title, but I think overall that this is an emotionally impactful series. Um, this is basically the story of a young woman who is in high school, and uh, she's incredibly beautiful, and she gets discovered um, basically by a group of aspiring fashion designers. They're all at college and she becomes their kind of exclusive model for an upcoming kind of graduation show, I guess. Um, throughout the series um, she does develop feelings or de develop some sort of a relationship with one of the main characters in this uh, designing group and it is sort of about their relationship. It is about her relationship with the, all the characters, but mostly what it is is a story about um, defining who she is, defining out what she wants to do with herself, and sort of coming to terms with who she is. Um, it is sort of a bittersweet type story. It is sort of a tragic story. There's tons of angst in this story, um, but it is interestingly uh, drawn. Um, some of the characters are quite eccentric, and I just find it overall really enjoyable, so um, definitely should check it out if you have a chance. And lastly, another title that is still in print, I think, well, still in print, but I think it's still ongoing. I don't think I've bought the last volume. I haven't finished reading it yet. Um, this is Princess Jellyfish by Akiko Higashimura. This again is a story about fashion design, but in this one it is a story about an apartment complex that is literally uh, filled with um, geek girls or otaku, and they all have various interests, um, so the main character is really interested in jellyfish, she's a jellyfish otaku, and um, one day she ends up meeting a stylish girl who um, comes into their apartment and uh, kind of just rejuvenates the entire place and sort of teaches these girls how to kind of become part of society as well as sort of learns to accept them for who they are and 
um, brings them into the world of fashion and um, in a way um, and in general is assisting to help them uh, not lose their apartment complex because it is under threat of being sold to someone else. Um, so this person comes in and really kind of changes their lives and it is really really enjoyable. I wouldn't say it's relatable, it's quite eccentric. The design in it is adorable. Um, the characters are in it are delightful and I have so much fun reading this. I am looking forward to it being finished published so I can buy the rest. I think I'm just going to binge read the entire thing when it gets to it. Um, but I've enjoyed this quite a lot. Um, and personally I have um, bought the anime for this. I did watch the first two episodes I think and I didn't like the way that the actors were voiced. I think I'm going to enjoy it a lot more if I read the entire series before I get into the anime. I just think that the manga is so much better so um, I would say give this one a shot. It's really great. It is so much fun and it is one of the best Jose manga that is currently being published. Um, so I definitely would recommend giving this one a shot. So that's all the titles I'm going to recommend in this video. Um, I certainly would be interested to hear what other titles that you would recommend for Jose Manga and certainly my favorites aren't necessarily going to be your favorites so uh, if, if any of these titles uh, sounded interesting to you though I would urge you to pick it up. I personally think that uh, the Jose Manga that is being published in English has on higher average um, a better ranking from me than most other manga. I would say like probably 9 out of 10 uh, Jose manga are going to be really good titles over you know shoujo manga which I'm gonna say is 5 out of 10. So I really think that uh, you should go and check out Jose titles for the most part. You're not going to miss um, or you're not going to come across a dud. There's a couple duds. Um, but they're really good titles out there and I really would recommend that you go and check it out. And the more people who check out Jose Manga and are reading Jose Manga means that there's going to be more published in English and I want that. So please do me that favor and go and read some Jose Manga. Um, that's it for me today and um, apart from that I did have uh, one thing that I wanted to mention and that is that the manga readathon that my sister and I host w is upcoming. It is being hosted from uh, June 17th to the 23rd I think. I will have the Twitter linked up below which is where the actual dates are going to be. I think that's what I had originally planned. Um, so it is upcoming. Uh, announcements will be coming up closer to that time but just be aware that that thing is coming up um, and if you want to join in with us you can get yourself ready so maybe buy some Jose manga to read for that week at any rate uh, that is it for me today thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye for now